and Merry Christmas. I am really excited to be sharing these videos with you guys. We have put together a series of heart and soul Christmas themed videos to hopefully encourage you and bless you over this holiday season. So in this video, we um, are gonna hear from my dear friend, Amy Parker. I had the joy of getting to sit down with her and talk about the gift of art that God has given her and how, um, what that journey looked like, the journey that God took her on in just showing her this gift inside of herself that God had planted and how she developed it and grew in it and used it not only just for herself but then to go and bless others and so I I trust that this video is going to bless you and encourage you and I hope that you guys enjoy it just as much as I did. You know, God told me that he's going to use your hands to do wonderful things. So that's always been something that I've sort of thought about and come back to and wondered about. And, um, you know, for a long time, I was trying to, like, figure that out. And, like, okay, so God wants to use my hands. Okay, so what does that mean? You know, like... I know it doesn't mean I'm going to be a surgeon because like that's not my forte and I'm not going to go to school forever and blood makes me sick. But so what does it mean? You know, like, am I supposed to go into like massage therapy and use my hands to like heal people in that way? But it didn't seem like, you know, like one of those things was like a clear answer. And yeah, like just creating art didn't seem like enough, you know, like to be considered like a gifting, you know, like if, if God gifted me with something, it's got to be more than just that, you know, more significant, more recognizable. And um, so then maybe I, I thought like, okay, so maybe just using my hands would be like just being a mom, you know, like, and I've got two small kids at home and you know, like you obviously use your hands a lot for yeah. taking care of kids. So maybe that's all it is, you know, just, just using my hands to like, mold young lives and whatever they say about that. And um, although that's like hugely rewarding and obviously the biggest part of my life, it, it still felt like there was a calling and, you know, something that I needed to pursue outside of that. Um, uh, so where I guess where it started to get more of something is like one day um, it was near my sister-in-law's birthday and I just saw a photo on her Instagram feed of her on vacation and I just you know just sort of thought about it and I was like you know that's really it's a beautiful picture of her and I love the the colors on there and I was like you know I should just I should paint it and you know like drop it off as like a birthday gift you know as like a little slip it in her card and so um, for a long time the thing that I painted the most uh, was Bible verses and you know whatever would stand out to me or if there was like a theme from the weekend sermon you know I would sit down and paint that and mm -hmm. through illustrating the word I felt a different connection to it like like a meditative practice mm -hmm. you know like slowly thinking through each of the words and you know like what illustration or what colors would bring the verse to life in the best possible way and then of course slowly that expanded into painting other things like portraits and pets and all those different things but um yeah there's always there comes a connection with with the subject that you're painting and what starts as just a piece of paper can end up being something really really meaningful mm -hmm. and it's, it's a huge joy to be a part of that like we need to fulfill the calling in our hearts and we need to devote ourselves to Christ. Yeah, and I think when things feel heavy, you know, like the year has been and like the world feels right now, it's easy to just succumb to that weight and to just feel like you've been absolutely defeated. But if we can sort of just create a little space, you know, like we can, it's still important 
to fulfill our responsibilities, obviously, you know, like as a parent or as a student, and to take those things seriously. But once we have done those things, to create a space for ourselves and our mind, right, to just um, have a space to quiet, and art is really, really good for that because it keeps your hands busy, you know, it focuses your thoughts, it, it forces you to, to find a state of peace, right? Because you have to do it slowly, and you have to do it methodically, and I find that it's always beneficial. And it's, mm -hmm. even, if, even if the art doesn't turn out, and even if it's something that goes in the trash and is never framed or displayed anywhere, it's, it's beneficial for my soul to just have that quiet time, right? Like, it's like, it's like a process. It's like, okay, so this is something that's important to me and that's my goal. Okay, so now let's, let's think about the things that need to get us there, right? So if my house is crazy, it's harder to do that, right? So if, if I can get my counters mostly cleared off-ish and, you know, things seem mostly calm in the rest of the house, then I feel like I can go into my office and, you know, sort of have that without more things being burdensome and falling behind. Um, my office is a mess because it's my office and my husband's office and the craft room and storage for a lot of things. But if, if that was... If it was essential to have the perfect situation and scenario and ambiance, it wouldn't happen because that, that would just eat up my whole day then, right? But yeah, so I get a drink and I have this super old CD of instrumental music and I put it in my little CD player and I sort of just get in the zone, if you will, and I, I like it that way because there's no commercials that come up or distractions like that, and I don't need to go onto a screen to, to switch the songs or whatever, and it's just, it just creates that um, mental calmness around me that I can then enter into exploring creativity. Um, one of the biggest things is that it allows me to focus on the intricacies of his creation. Um, one of my favorite things to paint is flowers, and although some varieties of flowers can appear decently simple, you can't just slap a flower on a paper and have it look anywhere near a lifelike flower. And there's so many different textures and colors and layers involved, and painting them gives me the opportunity to really intentionally look at things that God has made and appreciate the individual characteristics and, you know, truly, like, marvel at them. And, you know, like, this flower didn't just come to be, you know, it was created. And I think that's really special to, to have that appreciation for it. And obviously this is mirrored in my experience of painting family portraits and you know I'll do a family with four or five kids and they all look different right and they all have their unique characteristics and and that's from God and God created everybody and everything so beautifully and it allows me the the time to intentionally appreciate that um, yeah so at the beginning I really struggled with like okay so I, I enjoyed painting and I liked doing it and that was nice but I struggled with how to share it with people and how, how could I do something and share it or give it or express it without it being prideful and being like, you know, showy and like, look what I can do, you know? And I feel like that's something that is so huge, right? Especially in the church, you know, like, don't be prideful. So it's like, okay, so how can I create something and think that it's beautiful and want people to appreciate that without it being about me, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so that's been something that I've had to sort of sort through, something that's been really special in, in creating art is that it's allowed me opportunities to be invited into some really sacred moments of people's lives, and it seems to me that there's 
an intrinsic trait that art has that causes people to value it beyond its worth. And visual art is not just an experience for the eyes in the same way that musical art is not just an experience for the ears. And the arts have a power to move us, to physically affect us, and to draw out emotions from the depths of who we are. Uh, a few years ago I began um, painting family portraits and then I started getting requests for them to include Christ. Situations where a parent or grandparent had passed or where a child had been lost in pregnancy or at a young age and the family wanted to acknowledge their presence in the family while also recognizing them being with Jesus. Uh, these requests are always really special because it feels like the family is able to share a really intimate piece of their story with me as well as when they frame them and have them up in their homes I think it validates a part of who they are and who their family is to see a complete family portrait you know like especially for families who never got a photo with their stillborn baby and who never took that one last picture you know before their dad passed away and it's always a huge honor to be asked to be a part of those moments and I think that It's easy for us to think that if if our gift can't be used in the church, it's it can't be from God, right? Like if if what I do or what I feel called to or what what I enjoy doing, if it, I can't use that within the walls of the physical church, how can it be a God-given thing? And I think that that brings it back to, well, is God only within the church? If God is everywhere and with you wherever you go, then, then that's where your gifting is limited to. It's limited to everywhere. It, he is much less confined than what we make him out to be. And there are so many more giftings than what people typically recognize. And things like the gift of encouragement. That's huge, and people won't necessarily see that or praise you for it, but it has the ability to impact people's lives in a huge way, and especially now, especially in this season, you know, like smiling at someone, waving at someone, dropping off a card at someone's house, that can be incredibly impactful. I think that we can put a lot of pressure on finding the answer to, okay, what is my gift? What is my calling? It's probably one, and it's probably significant, and I'm probably doing something wrong if I haven't found it, you know? But I don't think it's that clear-cut, and it takes, you know, trying things. It takes being patient with ourselves and gracious with ourselves, and you know, like, what are your inclinations? You know, what are your interests? What brings you joy to do? You know, follow those paths and go down those trails and see where it brings you to. You know, like, you have something in you. Everybody does, because we're all creations of the Most High King, and He is the ultimate creator. It takes trying things, you know? I tried things. I tried to be into music because I love music. I uh, went to one guitar lesson and I hated it and I never picked up a guitar again. So, you know, you just have to be willing to make mistakes and to, to try again. Just start. Don't overthink it. Uh, don't wait till you have the perfect tools or equipment. You know, if there's a longing in your heart to create and a desire in your hands to make something, don't stifle it, you know, foster it. Um, give tons of allowances for mistakes and messing up. That's a huge part of it, you know. I've thrown away hundreds of paintings and drawings and stuff because they were terrible, but that didn't, that didn't stop me. And um, like anything, it takes practice. You can't aim to be the best on day one. Just aim to try, you know. Play around with different mediums till you find what feels best for you. Um, try painting with watercolor, try painting with acrylic, try oils, you know, maybe get some clay and sculpt something, you know, and uh, try sketching, try charcoal. Creativity is 
boundless and there are so many different avenues to explore and don't feel like just because one thing didn't work or it wasn't enjoyable that that means that it's all off the table. I think that it's really important, especially in this time, that we don't underestimate the power of our actions and the effect that we can have on other people. And I think sometimes when we think of blessing, you know, if we want to bless somebody, oh, that sounds elaborate, you know, that sounds daunting. But, you know, this season, people are going through really, really hard things. And a lot of people are hurting and are very lonely. And it wouldn't actually take that much to bless them. You know, whether that's just dropping off a Christmas card next door, or, you know, paying for the Starbucks in the car behind us, <laughs> you know? It can be little things that can really change the, the trajectory of someone's day. You know? And, and we all have the ability to bless others. And it, it doesn't have to be extravagant. And sometimes the smallest blessings can be the biggest blessings. And I know that I've felt that in my life, you know. The things that have been of the smallest monetary value have had incredible heart value. What an amazing testimony. I loved hearing about the way that her art and the, and the gift that God has given her has blessed so many people and has helped her to connect to God and spend time with her creator as she creates art. And so just like Amy mentioned in the video, I encourage you guys, especially over this holiday season, to look for a way to be a blessing to someone else. How can you go, whether it's small or big, go and reach out to someone, whether it's your neighbor or family or community. Um, I encourage you to go and look for ways to be a blessing to those around you. I hope that you guys have a very Merry Christmas.